know, I think that the lack of capital may be what finally puts us out of business with with oil rather than sheer depletion. Well, let me ask you, um, are, when, when, if we get into a position like that, honestly, aren't we going to be so weak that we're either going to have what uh, Gore Vidal thinks, which is a, a military dictatorship, or the Chinese could take advantage of the situation? Well, I don't I think the Chinese are going to be landing in San Pedro anytime soon. And I also, uh, you know, uh, I like to say that I'm, al- uh, I ha- I'm allergic to conspiracy theories, and um, I'm especially allergic to grandiose theories. And uh, I think this idea that we're going to uh, fall into a, mil- a military dicta- dictatorship is kind of grandiose. Uh, if anything, I think that we will see... Uh, that the federal government will become increasingly impotent and ineffective. And that's exactly what we're seeing now. You know, we, we just voted out, uh, uh, the Republicans and we voted in a, um, a Democratic president and a Democratic administration in Congress. And, uh, you know, we, we're making the uh, unhappy discovery that, uh, Mr. Obama seems to be just as ineffective as Mr. Bush was. You know, I, I hasten to add, I voted for Mr. Obama. Well, yeah, a lot of people did. I, and um, I'm, not, well, I'm not sorry I did, but, but it's, right. you know, because I think he's a better quality uh, person than the previous president. But it shows so, how ineffective the, uh, the central government really is. So I, I don't really think they'll be able to organize any kind of, uh, you know, fascist regime. Well, that's a good note to uh, pause on. I'm Jay Widener. You're listening to Smoke and Mirrors or with James Howard Kunzler. We're back. Smoke and Mirrors Radio Hour with Jay Widener, and I'm Jay Widener. And we're here tonight with James Howard Kunstler. And James, uh, where, where's your? What's your website? Uh, people want to see your stuff. www.kunstler.com. There you go. And uh, you know, I, I I really like what you're saying about this uh, idea that uh, it's exactly the opposite of what the conspiracy theorists are saying because. I really agree with that. I think we're actually heading towards a period of um, actually immense decentralization. Uh, and I wonder what you thought of that. Well, yeah, I think that that is probably going to be the trend. And, and uh, you know, although I tend to call it a relocalization, you know, I think we're going to see power and governance uh, really devolve uh, downward to the local level. And, and um, you know, more and more the action will be in our towns, and I'm not even sure the counties are going to have a whole lot of say about things. You know, I, the, one of the um, other big trends out there is that our, uh, you know, government at all le- at all levels is becoming increasingly insolvent, unable to collect enough money to um, run itself. So that's going to be increasingly a problem, too. Uh, yeah, that's happening in every place that I know about and in every place in America. Are you in California? Going, uh, Oregon. We're in southern Oregon. Okay. And, and we're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, refugees coming up from, uh, California right now. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of, uh, both those with some money and those without any money. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Freeway 5, which runs right up through Oregon, is getting a lot more hitchhikers than I've seen since the 60s. And more um, people by the roadside. And uh, dang, if it doesn't look like in two or three years, it's going to be like refugee camps running up the West Coast if mm-hmm. things go on like they are. Mm-hmm. And the West Coast is getting particularly hit hard because uh, the real estate thing. But, you know, you get you should get kudos because really and truly it was a banking crisis. But the banking crisis was, was preceded by the... Um, 
the skyrocketing oil prices, which really were the last straw for about 30% of the households in America. And they could no longer get to work. They'd moved far away from their jobs where real estate was cheap, like in Riverside and San Bernardino Mm -hmm. outside of L.A., and they were driving long commutes. And then the $4 a gallon gas busted them, and they couldn't make their house payment. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm sure that it didn't help. Um, although it's hard to say whether those people found themselves out of a job before they ended up having a problem commuting to the job that they no longer had. You know, I, I mean, well, it's true. It's, so, uh, so, all, all these so, things kind of converged, and um, uh, the banking crisis was well out of hand before the price of oil really skyrocketed in 2007, 2008. And, yeah, uh, but, that's true. you know, I mean, when I published The Long Emergency, I had a, a, a chapter in there that was titled The Hallucinated Economy. Yeah. And um, yeah. it was all about the uh, housing fiasco. And you could see it coming from a million miles away. I mean, it, you didn't have to be a, uh, a Ph.D. in economics to understand what was going on. It was just a lot of really um, bad lending, fraudulent um securitization of uh, debt, and, you know, the two words that we never hear in connection with the um, uh, uh, the housing slash banking crisis, the two words we never hear are swindle and fraud, but those are really the issues that were at the heart of it. Uh, definitely, on all ends, and everybody's to blame. That's what's incredible about it. Well, not everybody, but but the bankers certainly are, and so are the so are the people who bought houses under false pretenses, or even under wishful pretenses. Well, they did, and and now we have the problem of of, of uh, what I call cascading crises, where we're getting they're mounting these crises, and and right now gas prices have, have leveled off a little bit. Um, but you know Mexico is due to become a, 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 a an, ec, a, an ec, a importer of of oil by 2012, and you know I, I was going to ask you have they ever audited the fields in Saudi Arabia as far as we know? Well, we do. What we know is that the the figures for oil reserves in Saudi Arabia remain essentially state secret because. Aramco, yeah. the Saudi Arabian oil company, is a state agency, and they don't like to give out their information, and it's not to their advantage to give out information. They, 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 are, they benefit from the world not knowing uh, what their supplies are. Well, interestingly, it was more or less made official today that uh, Russia has surpassed Saudi Arabia as the world's leading oil producer. So, um, and but you know, then again, Russia is also probably past peak and on the way down itself. So, um, yeah, we don't know much about them, do we? Yeah, well, uh, we, we don't know that much. I mean, we know we know pretty much what they're getting out of the ground. Um, it's a little unclear what's left in there, but um, mm-hmm. we have, I think, good reason to believe that um, they're they've peaked. And uh, that they they're on the way down. And they've they've just recently signed huge contracts with China, right, to pump a lot of oil down to China over the next decades, right? Russia. I'm not really sure what what the, what's going on with them in China. Uh-huh. What we do know is that, as a general proposition, the uh, state-owned oil companies are changing the way the oil markets function because they are indeed making special favored customer contracts with other nations rather than putting their oil on the auction block, which is what the futures markets are. And, you know, we're going to see more and more of that. And what that portends for the United States is that, you know, us not being one of the more favored nations in the world uh, and and being the subject of a lot of grievance and, and envy and other negative feelings on the part of other nations, you know, we're going to have trouble getting yeah. oil from these parts of the world now. And, okay, uh, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that in one minute. Uh, I'm Jay Weiser. You're listening to Smoke and Mirrors, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 